Hello, Arthur. How are you? I can't hear you. Hang on. Can you hear me now? I hear you now. Whatever you uh, did worked. All right. How you doing? Good, hey, Arthur. How are you? I'm doing great. Awesome. Good to, good to meet you. Where where you are uh, calling in from? I'm from Toronto, Canada. Okay, I'm in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. That's awesome, awesome, yeah. awesome, and I'm um, uh, thank you for reaching out to my team, and I'm glad I'm here. Oh, I appreciate you coming on my platform and uh, conveying value to my audience about uh, building wealth through real estate investing. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. And at the end, if you're okay with it, we're going to let them know about this Saturday's event with. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki and Kevin Harrington and Robert Allen and myself. All right, no problem. And uh, I told a great friend of mine about you. His name is Gordon Bazaar. And uh, he's yeah. the famous, unfamous person you ever want to meet. And uh, he specializes in the private equity sector. And All he's right. done a lot of business with uh, Tony Robbins and marketing guru Jay Abraham. Oh, okay. And he's had over um, 350,000 students that graduated from his business program. So he went to your website and he was very impressed by what you're doing in the real estate industry. So he wants to see if um, y'all can do a conference call and see how you can create value for one another. Tell him two things. One, uh, actually for you too, uh, uh, you know, the tickets that we're gonna give away for the link that I sent, it's a, um, a general ticket. Uh, and then we have the VIP and Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Try again. I can hear you now. Okay. I said, um, so regular tickets that, uh, uh, that uh, you'll see that we'll give away today are general tickets and then there's a VIP tickets. And I would like to extend a VIP ticket to you and to the gentleman that you're talking about so then he gets to know who i am and then we get to all do business together okay i'm looking forward to it would you like a vip ticket uh no problem i'm i'm actually uh looking at your video screen but your video screen is uh frozen oh maybe it's the internet okay let me can you hear me now i can hear you but you're um Okay, that's a lot better. Okay, all right, sounds good. Let me just double check my internet. We're at the commercial uh, internet, so it should be okay. Go ahead. Okay. Now, now, now your uh, your screen is like frozen. Yeah, it's like little. Mm, let me see. You want me to hang up and come back on? Okay, now it's better. Yeah, okay. All right. Better. All right, sounds good. Must be the internet somewhere. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And your last name is Tosiani. Tulsiani. Tosiani. All right. So it's, like Tulsiani. A, it's like a it's like an Indian guy with uh, Italian last name, Tulsiani. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I was a police officer, I used to call people up and I say, hey, I'm Officer Tolsiani calling or Detective Tolsiani calling. And some people would go, oh, and then they go into this Italian language and, and blah, blah, blah. And I would say, and then one lady went on and I would, she wouldn't stop. So I said, told her I'm not Italian. And mm -hmm. she said, uh, okay, so what are you? I said, well, I want you to guess. And she guessed everything other than me being Indian descent, you know, so it's funny. <laughs> All right, are you ready to rock and roll? I'm ready, man, whatever you are. Uh, how long is it supposed to be? I'll say around an hour. Can you hear me? Your audio went out. Now I can see you, but I, I can't hear you. You want me to? There you go. Your audio just right. came back in. 
Must be the internet. Okay. So I said, um, let's do approximately 40 minutes because I have a, I have a, a meeting uh, right after that. I have another uh, podcast to go to. So okay. at least, and right now, you know, about 40 minutes, let's say. Okay. That'd be good. Okay. I'm ready. Go for it. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Arthur Robinson Jr. I'm the creator and host of the Powerful Interviews podcast show. And today I have another special interview for each and every one of you. Today I have a wonderful person on the show and he's a great friend of mine. His name is Sanal Tassiani. And for those that don't know Sanal, let me explain to each and every one of you about this incredible, phenomenal man. Sanal Tassiani, he is a master in the real estate industry. He has a phenomenal website, which is called Private Investment Club, and he basically owns his own private events, and he does his own private seminars in regards to how to build wealth in the real estate industry. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome the one, the only, the powerful Sanal Tosiani to the show. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Go ahead, Arthur. Okay. Now, I'd like to thank you once again for taking time out of your busy schedule to educate me and the audience worldwide about the power of real estate investing. I gladly appreciate it. You're very welcome. Now, what I'd like to know, can you explain to the audience in layman's terms, who is the phenomenal Sanal Tosiani? How long have you been in your powerful industry? And what is your expertise? Well, I, 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 I feel uh, and I believe uh, truly that I am just like everybody else. I'm the regular guy. I, I was a police officer and became a police detective. And uh, about 15 years ago, my wife came to me and said, we're going to have a divorce. And, um, and I didn't want, did not want to have a divorce. We had two children. And uh, so I left the police force and ended up going into real estate investing. And, and, and when I was driving a police cruiser, there's somebody who gave me a book called uh, Think and Grow Rich. And the second book I got was uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad book. And, 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 and this is the book that I got from one of my friends. And then as I was leaving the police force, I took a course called Nothing Down from a guy named Robert G. Allen. So both of these people, Robert Allen, Robert Kiyosaki, and of course. The audio went out. Hello? Okay, I can hear you now. It's your audio just went out. Okay, all right. How about now? Now it's fine. Okay, I'm gonna, so, so, um, so I left the police force in 2005, and the reason why I became very successful and well known um, is that the first year alone, I bought and sold 77 properties in one year alone almost wow. making it $980,000 for that one year. Hmm. And then I uh, opened up a- Was that net profit? Yes, it's the profits. Okay. And uh, one, um, then, then people asked me if I can teach them. And I was a shy guy. I never was not a public speaker. I was not a trainer. I was just a regular guy, basically. I was afraid of speaking and all that kind of stuff. So finally, I decided to open up the most elite top real estate club in North America. It's called Private Investment Club. And since then, we have, a mil we have helped people to go from zero to million, zero to multimillionaires. People want to make $10,000, $20,000, $30,000, even more per month. So we have helped a lot of people become wealthy. And over the years, I've made lots of money in 2008, 2009, and I lost all the money because of the crash. And then I came back again and generated millions of dollars uh, as well. So now I've been very fortunate 
to have shared stages with people like Tony Robbins, like Robert Kiyosaki, right? Robin Sharma, Jack Canfield, Brian Tracy, Robert Allen, uh, Kevin Harrington of Shark Tank, and many other, uh, you know, Ron LaGrand, like many of the other people that you may have heard of, uh, been able to go all over the world, uh, Canada, United States, Europe, everywhere. And um, now I have um, uh, members to my clubs who are millionaires and multimillionaires, and they're really interested in making money in real estate. So Jack Canfield of Chicken Soup, he's a member of my club. Robert Allen is a member of my club. Jack Canfield, uh, Jack Canfield, Robert Allen, and, and, and Kevin Harrington of Shark Tank, he's a member. Brian Tracy is a member of my club, and many millionaires and multimillionaires and successful people are members of private investment club. And now what I do is I actually help people monetize how to make money in their real estate and in business. How do you make money uh, playing and working? So I have a, coined a term, uh, a, a, a word, and it's a word that I teach everybody on the planet. It's called plurking. Mm -hmm. Plurking, uh, spelled P-L-E-R-K-I-N-G. And what plurking is, it's a made of word that I made up. It's basically taking the word play and taking the word work and you combine it together and it's called plurking. Mm -hmm. So what that means is you get to do what you love and make money. It's like Michael Jordan playing basketball. Mm -hmm. so, so, so I teach people how to plurk, and, you know, whether they're coaches, consultants, marketers, real estate investors, and I teach people how to do that. And I've, I've, I've been, um, I put big events. And of course, during the COVID-19, we do virtual events. Mm -hmm. And of, as you know, this, uh, this uh, Saturday, and you're coming as my VIP guest, uh, this Saturday, we're doing a live event called Wealth Mastery. Uh, and it's wealth-mastery- no, wealth-mastery.ca. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to put probably put that link in the uh, in, into the podcast. Um, and and I am bringing my good friend, Robert Kiyosaki of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's mm -hmm. the gentleman I read his book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I'm bringing Robert Allen, who actually changed my life when I took his course. It's called was called Nothing Down. He's coming as well. And my great friend and my mentor, uh, Kevin Harrington of Shark Tank, the billionaire investor, he's going to be coming and talking about how do you raise money for mm -hmm. uh, for your properties and your business, uh, mm -hmm. as well as Kiyosaki is going to talk about the the upcoming crash and why he believes that's happening. Uh, and we have speakers that are going to talk about how do you buy property, no money money down during these times. Should you be buying properties right now in USA or Canada? Mm -hmm. And 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 how should you become wealthy? What should you be doing in 2021? is the main focus. How do you grow your business? How do you bring in passive or active income every month? How do you do that? And the goal of my club is to make 100 millionaires. And, and, and Jack Canfield is helping me with that. Robert Kiyosaki is helping me with that. And of course, my, my mentor, Kevin Harrington, is helping me with that. So people who should be coming to this event on Saturday, by the way, it's obviously it's a virtual event on Zoom. Uh, wealth-mastery.ca is, is where you go to get your free uh, $97 ticket to your listeners. They can get that ticket for absolutely no cost. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Now, you basically build phenomenal relationships with, I would say, you know, the pioneers of the industry, Robert G. Allen, Robert Kiyosaki, actually, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, CPA, Tom Wilwright. He's been on my platform. He's a great friend of mine. And uh, you're going to have Kevin Harrington speaking at your phenomenal real estate wealth event. Can you explain to the audience, how did you develop those relationships with those hecto millionaires and billionaires? And should people really focus on creating value for business leaders? So that way you will have long-term relationships for now, as well as the years to come. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I was interviewed by Grant Cardone and he shared it with 1.2 million people of his uh, audience. When I went to Florida where, uh, where, where we got interviewed and we talked about this very, very closely. And, and so uh, how do you build relationship with successful people, legends, 
uh, even how do you build relationship with uh, with investors or or your clients who are going to help you know bring your business because if you have no clients you have no investors you have no business per se so how do you do that um, create a lose win situation not win win situation create a lose win situation so what if, what does that mean so let's say you're dealing with uh, somebody that is financially at the same level as you Mm -hmm. Well, you, you could probably can do win-win situation, right? But let's say that this person is 10 steps, 100 steps ahead of you, and you are here and you want to work with this person. That's why you want to create a lose-win situation. And what does that mean is that you're going to find out what is it that the other center of influence or legend, ne legend needs where you end up losing in the beginning and figure out what do you have to do so you get their time. This is the most important part. Like I'm, I'm not talking about time, meaning you go to an event and they're standing on a stage and there's 500 people in the room and mm -hmm. you see them, but they don't really know who you are. They, they come in, they do their speech and they leave. That's what I used to do many, many years ago. But mm -hmm. the point is how do you get that center of influence with Rolodex, with money, with contacts, with connections, who can actually take your business next level. How do you do that? Is you figure out what is it that's gonna get you into their smaller arena or circle. And I'll give you a couple of them. One is, let's say, they, let's say that they do an event, live event. Let's say you know, corona, uh, coronavirus goes away in a few months and we're allowed to meet and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Go and volunteer for them for free. Do stuff for them for free. Just go up to them and say, you know, and you're having an event coming up in this area. I, 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 I would like to come and volunteer for you. And I want, you know, for free and use me however you want. So when you volunteer for these people, they will get noticed. The second thing is this. If they have a program, if they have a book, if they have a mastermind where you can invest, where you pay to, mm. to go there. And, and now let's say instead of 500 people, the mastermind has 20 people. And, and that, that guru or legend is spending personal time with those 20 people only, what happens is you get to spend time with them. And then because you invested money with them, they're gonna ask you, what can I do for you? So what is a lose-win situation? In this case, first one, the volunteer, you, you invest your time and, mm -hmm. and, and you may not get any money back or you may not you may not even be able to do business with the legend, but you go with the intent of I'm going to go help out. And if the relationship builds, that's great. So in first, well, first of all, you're investing your time, energy to be getting any closer to these people. Second is you're investing your money. And so let's say they, you know, cost $500 or a thousand dollars or whatever the amount is. Uh, the, 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 fur, the bigger or the legend, for example, the more money you will need to invest in order to get closer to them. That's just basically how it works. So when you pay for it and you're there, they're gonna want you to, they're gonna want to help you. Mm -hmm. What's next level above the masterminds is one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So what I did was I said, well, I used to go to the legends and say, hey, believe me, I'm really good. Can I do business with you and all that stuff? Let's create a win-win. And the thing is, if they don't know you, they don't trust you, they don't, you know, they don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. The way it works is you spend time with them. That's when they trust you and like you. So the next level, highest level is one-on-one -on -one mentoring with them. So if you can afford to invest money into yourself in one-on-one, -on -one, you basically spend one-on-one -on -one time with them and you know they're gonna say, okay, Arthur, what do you want? And you're gonna say, well, I wanna, br I wanna bring more clients. I wanna get, I wanna make more money and it's good. Let me." Let me make it happen for you. So what they do is they end up calling their friends and vouching for you to do business with you. So mm -hmm. that's how you do the lose win situation. Uh, if one is if you have no money, you volunteer your time and, and do work for them for free, basically. The other one is if you have the money, that is the fastest way to create a lose win situation. Always attend their events, buy their books, you know, if they have if they have a, a next course where you, you know small group of people get together, get into that little small group. And last but not least, always attend events. Always attend events 
where you are a VIP or platinum or diamond or whatever, where they take the, the, the let's say there's a 500 people in the room and then they have 30 people that this person is going to have lunch with. You know, I always used to go to free events and free things, although that's okay when you're starting out. But if you really want to go to the next level, play in a big playground, mm -hmm. what you do is you buy that ticket so then you can break red with not only the legend, but also those 30 people or 20 people that are breaking bread with those people because they pay to be in there. And now they're, these are your partners, they're your investors, they're the people that you, and then when you're in there breaking bread with the legends, this is when you have conversation and all of a sudden everything happens when you break bread and build relationships. Mm. That's powerful. You. Uh, you talked about, you know, creating value for the legends. And that's extremely important if you want to be successful. And, uh, you know, the, your greatest asset that you have is investing in yourself. And I love investing in myself and I love reading books. But unfortunately, for some people, reading is a lost art today. Now, I see books behind you. And uh, I know those legends created some phenomenal intellectual property. I see Robert Kiyosaki and uh, the book that he co-authored with uh, Donald Trump. Yes. Can you explain to the audience what books does Sanal like to read and what books do you recommend for the audience to read? Well, uh, of course, I'm very biased uh, in the first place. I'm going to say to you, if you ever, if you're in real estate and you want to learn how to make money in 90 days and you want to learn how I raised money for my real estate investing, then this book is called Achieve. Uh, Achieve. Book is called Achieve. Get this book. Uh, it's going to really uh, help you a lot. If you want to learn seven steps of becoming wealthy, not necessarily real estate, but how do you become wealthy and steps is called A Secret to Wealth with Brian Tracy, my good friend, Brian Tracy. Get mm -hmm. this book. Um, uh, and of course, what you can do is uh, if you, um, you can get it from Amazon or you can just send an email to admin at privateinvestmentclub.com, admin and privateinvestmentclub.com. With each of the books, we, we send a uh, autograph copy to you when you send an email to our uh, group. Uh, there's another book, it's called Secret to Real Estate Wealth. Mm. And uh, let me give you one more, and then I'll give you one or a couple of them that are my, that ones I would recommend. And this is called The, the Success Secret with Jack Canfield mm. uh, of Chicken Soap and myself. Mm. Here's an, it, this is an audio book that, uh, that, that I recommend, but I also recommend uh, people to truly uh, read the Rich Dad Poor Dad book. Um, uh, and he has another book called Cash Flow Quadrant. Um, I, to me, this is the book that started everything for me. But I like Cash Flow Quadrant even better than Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, mm. It's a very, very, very good book. Think and Grow Rich is another very, very powerful book. And the last but not least, there's a book called Science of getting rich. And I rewrote that book this year uh, mm -hmm. with 2021 and COVID-19 in, in, in keeping those things in mind, how to be. So if you want cash flow, there's a mm -hmm. book called The Science of Getting Rich. And when we did this book, I did 20 videos and 20 audios and a book. And you can get that whole package by buying one the book. And all you do is just send an email, admin at privateinvestmentclub.com and, and just put down subject line, science of getting rich. And it's, you get a book, you get 20 videos and you get 20 audios. So you can listen to it, you can watch it or you can read it, anything. And whether you want the physical copy, whether mm -hmm. you want the physical and the digital copy, you get everything with it. Mm. Now, uh, I see that you uh, wrote a book with the legend uh, Brian Tracy. And uh, you was just dropping some bombs with the legendary books with uh, Think and Grow Rich. I know that's been written by Napoleon Hill. Uh, the other book you just mentioned, The Science of Getting Rich by Wild Steve Waddles. That was the original uh, author yes. of that book. And then you just basically brought that book to life where you basically wrote, rewrote that book, which is called The Science of Getting Rich. Uh, yes. To everyone that's listening and watching, I highly recommend uh, invest in Sanal Tassiani books. And uh, go to his website. He has phenomenal content that could take your mindset and your business to a whole nother level. Now, 
explain to the audience when you was writing your books, what was your thought process when you was writing your books? And would you say that your books are your business cards? Well, when I was writing the books, actually, I was writing it because I knew that many people could not invest, let's say, into um, my programs or some people were not ready and some people just did not have a lot of money for it. So I said to myself, how do I uh, write books so that somebody can just take what's in the book and, mm-hmm. and, and they had no other money. They spent like 20 bucks or whatever the amount is. And they bought the book and then they went out and they did it. It would really change their life. That's why I wrote those books first place. And, and, then, and then eventually when I wrote the books, that's when I realized that ha- writing a book and becoming a best-selling author does help grow your business as well. So that came out to me as a secondary. First was, let me just add huge value to the world. Mm. And then when I added a huge value to the world, that's when I realized, wait a minute, now that I've become a best-selling author and, and then I became international best-selling author, that it does bring the credibility to grow your business. Now I've helped like over, I don't know, maybe over 100 people become a best-selling authors. I've mm-hmm. helped people become monetizable uh, coaches, mentors, and speakers. So I help people with those kind of things as well. Um, but in, in, in beginning, for me, it was mostly like, okay, let me just give people, like I said, in Achieve, I talk about how do you raise money for the real estate? Because I get people come to me right now in Canada and the United States and, and all, the world, all over the world. I don't have the money to invest in real estate. Well, I, you know, I took a course called Nothing Down by mm-hmm. Robert D. Allen. That was the entire purpose of that course. So see, the thing is, books are starting point of education for me because mm-hmm. You know, they're $20, $30, they're very inexpensive. Then in the next level is attending events. Next level is actually working with those teachers, gurus, or people who are doing it. You, you know, and the closer you get to, the, to, the, to your uh, mentor and more time you spend with them, they are pulling you up to the next level. That's the difference at the end of the day, is that one is you're doing it by yourself. And the books are starting point for learning. And then the next, the top level is, you know, one-on-one with somebody saying, like, you know, when I was growing up, I, I didn't really like school at all, actually. I was, you know, I, I, you know it was not my thing. And um, I remember uh, sitting in a classroom, sitting beside somebody who could get better marks. And uh, if there's a test, if I copy that person, chances are I'll get close enough mark what they get if they're smart, right? You see, in school, in high school, in colleges, in universities, it would be illegal. It'd be wrong to do that. But in real life, it is the best way to become successful. Find somebody who has done it, got the results, copy them. Now, do you generate a lot of royalties from your books? I generate very little royalties from, I, we still get checks every month from royalties. Uh, the money is built, money from the books are made because it generates clients who are interested in doing business with you. They're being attracted to you rather than you going after them. So I get people from all over the world asking me to mentor them, to speak at their events, you know, do a interviews that, like we're doing today, going to a big podcast and news and all that kind of stuff. It, they're, 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 they're good credibility boosters. Mm. Now, earlier you mentioned about brainstorming groups. And I love immersing myself in brainstorming groups. Do you think entrepreneurs and business owners should formulate their own brainstorming groups so that can help pull each other up in regards to increasing their revenues in their businesses? Yes. So, so two things they can do. Um, mm-hmm. You know, brainstorming, uh, thinking, grow rich talks about the mastermind, which I have millionaire masterminds. In fact, on for, for some of my members and VIPs on Sunday, this Sunday, we're having Millionaire Mastermind for two hours with me and some of these successful people. And so there's two things that you need to do. One is form your own mastermind where you have kind of your peers come in and you kind of help each other. Mm-hmm. That's one. But the one that's even more important is the one where you go to a room of mastermind people that are 10 times more successful than you are. 
So if you go to a group of people that are 10 times more successful, then they are pulling you up and, and you get to learn from them. If you have, if you are the smartest person in the room, then you're only going to grow, maybe slowly you'll grow, but it's not the same way as copying that person that I talked about. Because if you get 50% in mathematics, somebody who's gonna copy you is almost gonna get 50, maybe 55%, because you know, together you grow together. That I get that. But what you really want to do is go. Okay, you know, um, I I, I want to. I make hundred thousand dollars a year. I want to mm -hmm. make a million dollars a year. Hmm, that's ten times more. Which group should I join where everybody's making a million dollars or more? Mm -hmm. So then you become the student that that they are pulling you up. And then in your own group, maybe you're pulling other people up, maybe people who are not as successful as you are. So you pull them up. So I have my own millionaire mastermind where I help pull them up because I have a goal of making 100 millionaires. And so I pull them up. Then I go to groups where I, I, I pay $25,000 in Florida um, as a mastermind where Kevin Harrington, for example, is a member. And there's other people who pay $25,000 who are going to be my partners, who are my investor. You know, that's why I joined, because I am not the smartest person in that room. Mm -hmm. They're pulling me up, you know. Robert Kiyosaki, you know, uh, Tony Robbins, you know, these are guys who are at the next level for me to pull me up to, to business point of view to be able to do that. So yes, to start off your own, but then don't stay in that room all the time because then others are being pulled up by you and that therefore you're giving your, your energy, you're, you're also giving uh, your uh, expertise to people that you're helping out, which is great, help out people. But mm -hmm. the question is, how, who's helping you out? Who's growing you to the next level mm -hmm. is a question. I hope that answers your question. Oh, you definitely answered my question. That makes a lot of sense. And I love to learn from people who's been there, done that, and who's still relevant in their current industries. So, Noel, let's talk about the power of being an entrepreneur. Now, I know the word entrepreneur means andrepandre, and it was a Latin word, and it was invented in the 15th century in France. And a gentleman by the name of John Baptist, he invented the word, and over 300 years later, that word still exists, which is entrepreneur. So entre means between and pandre means to take. So it means to take lower productivity and increase it to higher productivity. Can you explain to the audience how are you increasing your productivity in your real estate businesses? So, so my business, uh, I have um, several businesses. One is the real estate investing. That's, that's what I've been known for and all. Number two, is 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 uh, helping people become and get public speaking stages so help them become speakers and then get them stages number three is i mentor people and those are my main businesses there are other things that i do like i write books and you know masterminds and all that stuff for me entrepreneurship is very simple it's, it's value creation it's mm -hmm. value creation and that's it and so how do i define that very very simple you give me a dollar I give you $2 back. Mm. Okay, very simple for me. Meaning, you give me a piece of paper that says dollar, I give you use value or cash value that is going to double it. Now, mm. you see, you're going to be a very happy client and customer mm. when I do that for you. So let's say you come to me and say, Sunil, coach me, and I, I, I make... $5,000 a month right now, um, you know, per month. So you pay me a certain amount of money. Let's say you pay me $50,000 to coach you. I Then let's say I help you generate $100,000 in real money from your business that you did not have before. Mm. That means I gave you $2 for every dollar that you gave me. Mm. To me, this is all about... It's all about, you know, forget about, like, yes, you should learn about marketing. You should learn about sales. You should learn about credibility and all that stuff. But if you do all that work and don't provide value, it doesn't, it, it's, it's, it doesn't stick around. Sure, there's, there are people who kind of 
you know, get lucky and, and, and sometimes they do stuff and then disappear. But that's not a long term business for a long term business. You got to do what this guy did when they did the Apple, when they did the computer, when they formulated the Facebook or Internet or LinkedIn or Google. These are guys and examples of giving you not double the value, maybe a hundred times the value. Think with how Google has changed everything. So be the Google of your business, mm -hmm. even if you're not at that level, meaning Google can give maybe a hundred thousand times more because some of us don't even pay anything to Google and for free, we can get all these stuff, right? So they're giving a like huge value, uh, for example, you know, and social media that brought, bring people together and then, and all that kind of stuff. So figure out to yourself, okay, what do I love? What, do, what, what, is the, uh, what does the market want? What are they willing to pay? What, what am I willing to take for, for, for it to be worthwhile for me and for my business to sustain it? And how do I give double the value? That's it. That, it's so simple for me. Give 100% ROI. Mm. You put a dollar, I give you $2. And that's the way you should be. Now, there, it's going to get a little tricky because if you're buying glasses, for five hundred dollars, how do you know this is worth thousand dollars, right? Well, you know that's where you have to say to the the person, uh, maybe it's the service after, maybe it's the quality of the glasses, maybe if something scratch occurs, you you replace it free and you answer fast and you service your clients quickly. Uh, maybe because of these glasses, uh, you feel good about it versus inferior glasses and all that kind of stuff. So. For me, the business that I'm in, which is real, uh, real estate, entrepreneurship, business, uh, monetization, sometimes it's a lot easier for me to say, you know, when, when somebody becomes a member, by the way, members, uh, when, when somebody pays a fee to become a member of my club and they make 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000 dollars, they know that they made lots of money. And when I go back to them and say, hey, do you want to renew? They're going to say yes. Wow. You can't go wrong if you give double the value. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I like that powerful statement, double the value. Now, you just lift up a phenomenal intellectual property, which is the iPhone. And uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, they built that brand. And uh, before he passed away, Steve Jobs, he had $119 billion in the bank cash liquid because they actually took that brand to another level, but they had processes and teams and systems in place from people from all over the world to help them take that brand to a global phenomenon. Now, you basically are dominating the real estate industry. So I know you are investing in, you know, high income properties, middle income properties and low income properties. Can you explain to the audience, what is your bread and butter in regards to generating income, would it be high income properties or middle income properties or low income properties, whether it's residential real estate or commercial real estate? Um, mo most of them are, are residential, first of all. And I have been able to do what most of the gurus say not to do, including uh, Grant Cardone and, and Kiyosaki. What we did was when, when the market crashed, my team and my members together, we ended up buying over 900 houses in the United States from Canada alone. And, and 900 the, houses. Yeah. The reason wow. why we did that was we mm -hmm. found that, well, especially when the market crashed, it was mm -hmm. so easy to pick them up. And we, we picked up the ugliest properties and we just fixed them up and we put a renters in. That's basically what we did and multiple bases and all that kind of stuff. So, um, for me, what really was amazing is mm. that it's cap rate. It's the ROI, meaning let's say I'm buying a apartment building that has 100 units, mm. 100 units, mm. or I can go to the same area and buy 100 houses in that area, let's say. So mm. in my mind, those 100 houses are like apartment building, even though they have nothing to do with each other. Right. Absolutely. Okay? 
And, mm-hmm. and so there, there is a benefit of buying an apartment building or, uh, you know, where you have 100 humes and all that stuff. And, and because you only pay, first of all, you only put one deal together. Secondly, um, the, the common expenses, like, you know, let's say accounting or, or, or cleaning up the, the parking lot and all that. When you combine it, it doesn't cost 100 times like cutting the grass for 100 homes. But what I did was I said, I don't really care. What I cared about was how much rent is it coming? What are the expenses? And what's my net profit? If my net profit is similar percentage wise as if, it, if I bought the apartment building, let's say apartment bu- building is six cap rate and a house is six cap rate. Well, I said, I'm just gonna buy a house. Why? Tomorrow, one of my investors says, you know, Sunil, I, I need the $50,000 right away, man. I need it. Can mm-hmm. I sell my building? Why, well, yeah, but do I want to sell my building? No. Okay. Now I have 100 houses and somebody wants their money back. Maybe I want my, some of my money back. Maybe I want to invest in something else. I got 100 houses. I'll just sell one house. I still got 99 houses. Mm-hmm. So it's liquid. <laughs> Last but not least, mm-hmm. if, if I gave you and probably majority of the people an option and mm-hmm. said, where would you like to live an apartment or in a house like if the money was like slight difference what would you do most people say i'll take the detached house independent house single Mm -hmm. family residence right Mm -hmm. it's easier to rent for me and so when market crashed i was buying two hundred thousand dollar properties for fifty thousand dollars It was, it was like, why isn't everybody doing it was my question. But then on the other hand, I was, I was happy that not everybody was buying it because there was no competition for me. In Canada, I was buying properties in the United States, in Ohio, different cities in Ohio, Kansas City, Florida, different areas of Florida. And, and, and we were just picking up houses, not in sexy area. We're not mm-hmm. buying in Miami. We're not buying in uh, Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. We're not buying in Chicago, you know, down to, in, in the loop. No, no, no. We're buying where three bedroom, husband and wife, one or two kids. They, 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 both of them probably work in, you know, uh, maybe McDonald's or Walmart or, or Starbucks. They both make some money together. They, 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 they need to live. It's not like um, um, gang related, you know, areas. It's the, it's the sort of lower than middle class, but higher than working class, like somewhere in between where you need to live. Mm. You see, they're not going anywhere. Absolutely. When the rents are like thousand bucks, $900 for a three bedroom, you know, they, they're not going anywhere. And you know what I did at the end with those, some of those people, I basically said, Hey, um, uh, do you, um, um, Arthur, do you like this house? They go, yeah. I said, do you want to buy this house with the same amount of money that you're paying the rent? Mm-hmm. They go, yeah. So I turned them into buyers. Mm. Wow. So basically, you was taking $50,000 of C capital, but buying $200,000 home, pretty much that's what it was worth. So how long did you actually just kept that up with that formula by taking $50,000 but buying a property that's worth over 200 grand. For example, in Ohio, I was picking up properties in Youngstown for $10,000. In in Cleveland, I was picking up property for $25,000. In Florida, Mm -hmm. it was a different price and all that stuff. But the, you know, I remember buying six flex in in Cleveland, Ohio, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where it was generating 25% cap rate. It was like crazy. Like I couldn't believe it. Right. But that's, that's like spending $100,000 and getting $25,000 net income every year. So in four mm-hmm. years, you paid off the whole building from the rental, never mind the appreciation, never mind anything else. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so how did I, we started in 2008, mm-hmm. 9, 10, 11, 12, maybe six or seven years we did that. In, so we did that from Canada into the United States. Mm. Now, I want the audience to be clear. And you mentioned that powerful word cap rate. So capitalization rate, 
that's just a formula for yielding money. Yeah, it's basically uh, what a lot of people say, you know, it's a very quick formula. Uh, example is if you buy a house or property for $100,000 and you're making $10,000 in your pocket, you got $10,000 a year. That means it's 10 cap, 10%. Mm -hmm. why, is, why do they use the capitalization rate? Because they're saying, let's not take into account the financing. That's how you know. So you, that you can take that formula for 100,000 or $100 million property. So the way they do it in commercial property is simply say, hey, here's the property, it's got six cap rate. You know immediately what it should be generating you know, if there was no financing. Obviously you're gonna get financing, but that's how they use it. In a single family home, they usually do not use the word cap rate. It's usually a commercial, but I look at single family home like a commercial. Because if it doesn't generate income, I don't want it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. So the lower the cat rate is on apartment building, the higher the purchase price is going to be. But the higher the cat rate is, the lower the purchase price is going to be. Is that correct? No, the reverse. Mm. Reverse. If, if the cap rate is 8%, mm -hmm. 8%, that means it's a better deal than if the cap is 9%. Mm -hmm. let's say there are two buildings side by side this one gives you eight percent and it's 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 three hundred thousand dollars this one gives you nine percent cap right also three hundred thousand dollars that means this property income purposes is better mm -hmm. i have about three more minutes before i go jump on to a next uh, uh interview as well okay let's have a conversation about money now i know money is not value money is just a facilitator to do transactions can you explain to the audience, how would you define money? Money to me is a resource. It's just a resource. Meaning in today's society, if you go back 10,000 years ago and somebody gave you a piece of paper, the same money that we have today, you would just don't care. You would probably just burn it to, to generate heat maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, to, in today's modern society, money is a, is a form of exchanging value. That's all it is. It's just exchanging value. So you do not have to have goats and I do not have to have, uh, you know, uh, cows to exchange. That's basically it in these days. So money is basically um, something that is, is, is anything you want in today's life, generally speaking. You want to go to a better school. You want to send your kids to better school. You want to buy something. You want to grow your mindset. You want to attend events. It's basically... Uh, uh, an exchange of value. You go to an event, they give you uh, intellectual uh, property or they give you training and you give them piece of papers and they take those piece of papers and buy whatever they want to buy. Mm. They can fly, they can, they can go to a hotel and all that stuff. So to me, money is a median of exchanging of value between prop, uh, uh, two or more pro uh, parties. So money is the byproduct of the value that you uncover? That's right. And it's also a median of how to uh, exchange it instead of saying, okay, I don't really need a phone. And, and you say, well, I'll give you a hundred glasses in the olden days and we exchange one. Well, I don't need a hundred glasses. So now I can take the money, which I provided the value for, I got the money and I can get to, I have a freedom of using and, and investing that money into whatever I want. That's what money is to me. Mm. So no, I appreciate you coming on my show today because the whole premise of my show is to educate entrepreneurs and business owners that they can live the life that they truly desire, but they have to be open to these important principles. So I don't like what I see was on the news. So I create my own news. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I'd like to just say, uh, if I, when I, uh, as I go, uh, please, uh, I'm inviting you uh, to, as my guest, to the Wealth Mastery uh, event with Robert Kiyosaki, Robert Allen, Kevin Harrington, myself, and some of the other experts. It's wealth-mastery.ca, wealth-mastery.ca. Uh, you go there and you get your tickets for absolutely free. And I look forward to seeing you. The event is on Saturday, December 5th, which is mm -hmm. coming up. Is this going to be, is this live right now or is it going live? This live. It's fine. Okay, so it's today is Wednesday and it's this Saturday and, and I truly look forward to seeing you. And Arthur, if you can, I'm not too sure if you're going to put a link in there. If you can, that would be awesome. All righty.
Do you have any last pearls of wisdom for the audience? I would say to you, um, whatever dreams you have, write them down and, and, and visualize it. Be obsessed with it. And at the end of the day, remember you're on this planet not to come, breathe, and then die. You're not here to just come, breathe, and then leave this planet without any. Come to this planet, breathe, enjoy, help, give value, do something, leave a legacy, uh, build generational wealth. And last but not least, plurk. I want everyone to plurk from now on. Can you explain to the audience one more time exactly where they can find you and your social media handles? Um, maybe uh, we can just put them in the in the uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, chat box if you don't mind. But just go to privateinvestmentclub.com. And if you go to Facebook or LinkedIn, punch in my name or YouTube, punch in my name, Sunil Talsiani, and you'll find me there. To everyone that's listening and watching right now, I highly recommend getting involved with Sanal Tosiani. You hear the passion that came through his voice on my show today. He broke down layman's terms of how you can become wealthy in the real estate industry and go to his website. He has phenomenal content that could take your mindset and your business and enhance your skill sets to the next level. But remember, you have to implement what you learn. Knowledge is not power. The implementation of knowledge, that's what makes knowledge becomes powerful. So to everyone that's listening and watching right now, remember that the strongest asset each and every one of you have is your brain and what you think about and what you take action on that will become your reality and your mentality creates your reality. May God bless each and every one of you and bye for now. Thank you, Sanal. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me, Arthur. Have a pleasant day, everyone.